Hello, uh, it is one o'clock on Thursday. Thank you so much for joining us again for this week's Hub Live. Uh, as you know, we conduct these Hub Live sessions to encourage people in business to adopt technology and modern best business practice so that your business can grow regardless of the situation. Now, we've all been going through a bit of a challenge with COVID and the coronavirus and isolation and the response to that. And fortunately, I think we're coming out of the, like at the, the first back end of the first bit of isolation. And uh, I'm therefore, I'm super, super happy to be joined by my guest today, which is uh, Ben Kennedy from Gecko. Hey, Ben, how are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, super glad to be here. So good to have you. And the reason why I'm so excited about having Ben on the show is because now that we're coming out the back end of isolation, I think it's really important that we focus on two things. The first one is our mindset as entrepreneurs. So you might have gone through something that was really, really well. We all have, let's be honest, been going through something that's been really challenging. Uh, it has disrupted our businesses, it's disrupted our lives, it's disrupted our kids. And so something that we're going to address today that I feel super important is mindset and the right kind of mindset to adopt as a business person. So you might have had a great mindset six months ago and you've just been through a bit of a rocky road and it's a really good reminder for us to reset our mindset. So how do we think? And then also what I'll be talking about um, with Ben today is how to growth hack your business so how to get a hundred sales with almost no money now you know no money to invest up front so we're all really excited about getting sales and getting our customers back so I'm super super excited about having Ben on the show with us today now Ben you're actually in Sydney aren't you I am yes no it's a little bit uh, nippy down here on this um, this Thursday afternoon but um, but yeah no it's um, great to be here uh, Courtney was the same before you're wearing your hustler hoodie, which is, <laughs> which is, which is really cool. Uh, is that because it's cold and you're a hustler? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It is, it is freezing down here, but yeah, no, um, I was lucky enough to win the, the hustler of the year award um, last year. So for everyone who doesn't really know what a hustler is, it's, um, it's pretty much someone who just, you know, gets down and dirty, works, works really hard um, to, yeah, I guess, get results. Wonderful. Now, Ben, tell us just a little bit about Gecko, when you started Gecko and just where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the ideation of, of Gecko was in January 2018, actually. I was um, with some of my family members in New Zealand and I realized that I didn't really have a place to, to sleep and we, we needed to, I guess, hire or, or share an air mattress. And that was, um, I guess, where Gecko was sort of born. Um, and, you know, I remember when I went back to Sydney, I asked my friends and I thought, oh, you know, this is such a great idea. And they just like stood, just sat there like, and I was like, oh, maybe it's not. So um, I realized <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was a little bit embarrassing. That's for sure. Um, and, but yeah, so, so what I sort of realized is I couldn't really vocab, you know, really, I didn't have the vocabulary, I guess, to, to really explain what Gecko really was like I, I can now. So fast forward, it took us about, um, 14 or 15 months to properly validate um, our business, which we, we had with the help of, of everyone in the Smart Hub in Rocky, which was amazing. Um, and yeah, then since then, we've pretty much just been going full at it. Um, we had a growth rate of 472% week on week uh, before coronavirus. Yeah, and then coronavirus <laughs> sort of hit. And um, yeah, now, now I think it's closer to around that 200, 100 uh, mark on average, which is a little bit more disappointing. Um, however, we are certainly looking to, to slingshot um, out, of, out of the pandemic, that's for sure. Well, let's be honest. I think anyone who's experiencing 100% growth month on month cannot be disappointed. Yes, you've come down from the 400% prior to coronavirus, but 100% growth month on month is phenomenal. Now, let us make, you've kind of touched on two things that I just want to highlight. The first one is, that even though you are based in Sydney, you have been part of our Turbo Traction Lab program that we're running right out from the Smart Hub, which is our federally funded um, program. It's also funded, co-funded by Bevan Slattery and Rockhampton Regional Council. Um, and through that process, you were able to validate your idea, but also you were helped 
with the words to explain what gecko is so that when you say, oh, I have this idea and you explain it to your friends, you don't get like straight faced and like what an eye rolls, right? So yes. tell us, give us your pitch. What does gecko do? So um, yeah, that's a, that's a really great way of saying it. So um, gecko is a rental marketplace that helps people make extra cash off items that are gathering dust in their home by renting them out. That is awesome. So yeah. essentially, I can put my air mattress, of which I have three at home, just to be, <laughs> sure, just to be clear. Um, I could put my air mattresses on Gecko and all of the other stuff which we accumulate. And I think that's one thing that we've all been doing in isolation is we've been trying to go, like, why do I have all this stuff? So you could put all that stuff on Gecko and someone else could hire the stuff. And so you can make some extra cash from the things that you've been accumulating over your lifetime. For what sure. a great idea. Absolutely. A quick, quick plug for Gecko. What's the, what's the um, website address? What's the platform address? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely check us out. Um, we're www.gecko.rent. Um, so, yeah, no, that's, that's us. As well as that, uh, one thing uh, that you guys taught me is because one thing that we also do is we're also helping the environment. So our big vision is to change consumers to sharers for the sake of the environment. So obviously encouraging sharing and whatnot. Um, and we help people rent really cool items, like whether it's an air mattress or if it's a pair of skis because you want to go down to, to Threadbow um, or, you know, if you, if you want to teach yourself how to DJ and you can, you know, hire out some, some DJ decks. So, yeah. That sounds awesome. Well, maybe if we have a couple of minutes at the end and you can find some photos of uh, things that you yourself have rented and rented out, then you can share that um, maybe towards the end of our hub life. But get, let's, get, let's get on to the real business. So I know that Courtney yep. will put in the comments, by the way, if you want to visit the Gecko platform, Courtney will put that link in the comments. So Mr. Ben Kennedy, Mindset right? I think we all as a business community need a little bit of a reminder of, or maybe even a reset around how to think about yourself and business and yourself in business. Give us a few of your insights around mindset. Well, in terms of mindset, I think one big thing about entrepreneurship, as it's sort of become a lot more, you know, cool to have your own business and so on and so forth, as, as we see, you know, the the huge amount of success. I mean, particularly, you know, whether it is in, in Rockhampton, Sydney, America, um, wherever, you know, it, it has become, you know, so cool to become uh, an entrepreneur. However, um, what that results in is, you know, people doing things for the wrong reasons. And in my personal opinion, um, what, I, what I believe is that, you know, it's just one of those things where you need to be in it for the right reasons. Um, so I guess to, to give you an example, you know, if, if you're just looking to, to be a millionaire or, you know, you just want to be rich or, or something like that, I, don't, I just don't think that small business or, or startups is sort of, you know, the thing that's going to be what gets you there. Um, what's really important is, I guess, having a real passion for something. For example, you know, if you're a you know, rugby player um, and, you know, that's your bread and butter and you absolutely love rugby, then that's absolutely what you should be sort of getting into. Um, and if you sort of, you absolutely love what you do, whether like for me, for example, I am so excited to get up each morning. Um, and like 7 a.m. used to be so early for me um, as a classic millennial. But, you know, like I, I absolutely love it. I'm so excited. I'm so pumped um, to really just, just, get in, just get into it. So I think that's one of the main things that I think is really important. And just seeing, I guess, your own purpose and your own intentions, you know, bring it, bring it back to your own personal goals. Like where do you want to be in 10 years time and how, how do you want to get there? Now, one thing I've sort of seen as well, particularly with a lot of my friends is a lot of them have, you know, got great uh, ATARs or, or I'm not too sure the correct terms for them now, but they've been really, really intelligent, but their passion may lie within hairdressing or it may be with, you know, shoe sales or something like that. And mm. me personally, like what's more important than, you know, getting rich and getting famous and everything is actually being happy. You know what I mean? So if, if you're sad um, earning a million dollars a year versus being happy earning $50,000 a year, you are 100% winning being happy with that $50,000. In, in my personal opinion, that's, that's what I think. Um, and as, as well as that, something I've sort of noticed is when you actually are passionate in something, for example, hairdressing, 
is that you, you won't be earning $50,000 a year. Yeah, maybe, maybe when you first start your first two or three years, but then you'll, you'll open up a, a hair salon or a barber. And then, you know, you sort of grow from there because you'll love what you do. You'll work extra hours because you just mm-hmm. absolutely love what you're doing. And then you'll have, you know, a store in Sydney, you'll have a, a store in Queensland, you'll have a store in Rockhampton, you'll have a store overseas, you know what I mean? And you'll be able to, to have a franchise um, of, of barbershops. So it's just one of those things where if you're passionate in something, you should just like really just double down on it um, because, you know, I, 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 I don't think that you, you can go wrong. Okay, so mindset number one, go with the industry that aligns with your passion. Yes. Go with the industry that aligns with your passion. If you are passionate about what you do, you will work harder and go further than someone who is stuck in an industry that they actually do not care about. Yeah. And if you're currently stuck in an industry that doesn't fill your life with joy, then maybe you could start validating or pivoting your business uh, into an industry that you could be passionate about or that you are passionate about. Absolutely. And I can even tell that from my own experience because I used to work as an auditor from a mid-tier firm in in Sydney. And don't get me wrong, like it's one of those things when people say, oh, what's the best part about work? And they say, and you say, oh, the culture. And that that was, it's, it's totally true because the work that you're doing is just not fun at all. Um, and it's something I noticed. I remember when I went, I remember <laughs> that code for, I hate the job, but I like the people. Yes. Yes. Pretty much. Um, <laughs> and you but, say culture is the best part, then the job's no good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, to be, to be fair. I mean, culture, I mean, people is what, in my opinion, like people is, I guess what make things fun to be fair. But in that okay. sense, it was very much that that was just so much better than the actual work. And it wasn't because the work I was doing was terrible. It was because, the work I was doing wasn't the right fit for me. You know what yeah. I mean? I think that was, that was the main thing that I sort of realized. And as I, as I sort of was waking up to, to go to work each morning, I, I, re- I would look up at the ceiling and I would say like, oh, should I chuck a sickie? Like I never would, but it's one of those things that like, it's, it's amazing how much of that impacts your mindset and how much you want to you do things. Um, so, you know, uh, that's, I mean, that's just advice that I'd get because I wouldn't want anyone to sort of, go down that path um, because I'm like a, a hundred times more happy uh, working on my own thing and I'm earning way less at well at the moment. Um, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where yeah, there's, there's no price for happiness. Yeah, that's right. But also let's be honest, when you get into business in the early days, you work harder and you earn less, yes. but then if you do the right thing and you validate your, your market and your business idea, and you learn how to market what it is that you sell and you learn how to really understand your customer and how to reach that customer. Over time, you'll be earning more than the people who remained in the in employment. Absolutely. That, that's just essentially the business journey. Yeah. So it's almost like buying a house. You have to pay a deposit before you get the house. Okay. Um, this is just the deposit that we pay in business in the early days. Absolutely. No, 100%. And that's why like, when, when you think of business, it is so hard is because so many people can't get over those first two, three years because you are, right. you are actually, you're losing all the time. And like, you still, you still lose as soon as you get bigger as well. But like the losses are just so much harder at the start, just because, yeah. you know, it, 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 and it can really, you know, impact, you know, your, as I said, your mindset and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. And that's why um, if, if you're stuck in a, or if you are in employment at the moment and you want to start a business and you want to get into an industry that you are passionate about, doing that as a side hustle, which just means you're doing it part time while you're also working a job is a really good way to transition And then once you know that that business idea has been validated and you've worked out that you can make money to support yourself and the people that you need to support through pursuing that business, that's when you can then make that leap between employment and business. And that's how a lot of people get out of the corporate market and into into jobs. However, with this Corona thing, I think there are people with time on their hands and you might be on job keeper or job seeker this might be the ideal time for you to test that idea that you've been sitting on for years and to enter an industry and a, a business that might fill your bucket with heaps of passion and joy i couldn't agree more and i like i like the word that you use with test because that's it's something that's it's a little bit harder to do when you are side hustling but when we are in this period where you have all this time 
you can literally test out, you know, full-time employment um, at working on your startup, you know what I mean? Which I, I think is, is really cool. And it's a very rare opportunity to be in because, you know, if you notice that oh, I probably am not, like it's not something that I really want to do in my free time, then it's a good, I guess, tester, as you say, to know, oh, okay, that's probably not the path that I want to go down. Okay, that's really, really awesome. Love that idea. Okay, so let's get on to the word validate yes. because there's a lot of mindsets around validating too. One of the greatest challenges that I see people who get into business or people who are in business but need to change what they do and capture a new market, one of the greatest challenges that they face is to know whether the idea that they have is good enough or even they might not have an idea at all. And they go, they know what to do, but they just don't quite know how to do it. So can you talk to me about A, the mindset of validate? First, maybe define what validate means. Yeah. Then give me a good mindset around validate. And then maybe we can talk a bit after that about how to practically validate ideas. So first, what does the word validate mean? And what's the point? Sure. Why are we talking sure. about validation? Yeah, so the way I look at validation, I sort of look at it as a little bit of an equation. Um, I always yeah. have a little bit of a maths brain. So it's, in my opinion, it's your point of differentiation times market demand equals validation, right? So I'll just sort of say, I guess, what that means. So your point of differentiation, you know, your sweet spot, your secret source, like what you're doing differently, and then market demand. Do people actually want to, to buy this? Do you know what I mean? I think that's definitely, uh, well, in my opinion, that's like the equation um, of sorts to, to validation. So in, in terms of a, a practical sort of mindset, um, I think, you know, to, to put this in, in perspective, uh, something like Uber, because I know that, um, you know, I, I used Uber last time I was in Rockhampton. And um, one thing is if you had a different ride sharing company, right, there's clearly market demand, right? People definitely want this. Um, but do you have a point of differentiation to Uber? I would argue no, because, you know, you're, you're, you're a, a car sort of ride sharing business. It's the exact same sort of thing, right? But then on the other side of the spectrum, let's just say you have a, a scooter, um, where, which is the same sort of concept to, to Uber. So I guess your point of differentiation is going to be, you know, you, you'll tick that box um, because, you know, it'll be a lot cheaper and, and, and so on and so forth. However, Will your market demand actually want this? Um, probably not because, you know, it'll, it won't be as safe. Um, and, you know, when you're on the back of a scooter, anything can sort of happen. There's a lot of legalities that are, that are involved with that too. It might even be illegal. I actually don't really know. But it's just an example, I guess, that I sort of, of use. So, you know, I think that's how to, to put it in, in perspective. So how do we know whether the market wants what we want to sell? How can we tell? Yes, yeah, so that's a really, really good question. So the ways I guess that, well, I, I guess I learned um, through, through, you know, the Smart Hub and, and all my sort of experience that I've had to date was just mainly just getting out there and start speaking to, to everyday people or whether it's your, your actual target market is probably the better answer to that. So one thing that I, I did in, in particular was because I'm, I'm a little bit different to most businesses as I have the um, demand side and then I also have um, the supply side, which is obviously two different sets of people. So one thing that I guess I needed to validate first was the supply side, because without the supply, you don't have the demand. So what I would do is I, I put out a survey for me personally, um, and I sent it out to, I think it was over a hundred people. I just said, Hey, you know, do me a huge favor, just fill this out for me. Um, and what I found was 64% of people said that they would hire out their items. And I said, I oh, Okay, well, that's not, that's not amazing. Um, and then after that, I said, okay, what if you had a bond and security measures that were in place that could guarantee that you either get your money back or your item back? And that number jumped from 64% over to 89%. So I saw straight away that the security aspect of, um, you know, sharing and whatnot is, is so huge. So mm -hmm. that was like, oh, okay, you know, it's a, it's a real eye opener for me because I, I remember asking myself, would you list your um, speaker on there? And I literally said to myself, no. And I said, why? And then, and then I was like, oh, because there's no, you know, like security in place. And I was like, oh, well, that's what we'll do now. That's what we're going to work on. And now, now we've got a great security system. It's a, a five-step process, which you can have a look at on the website. Um, so that, I mean, that's an example that I did. Another thing, that's important is obviously finding out the demand side. So in terms of demand, it was really difficult for us to, I guess, see because number one, 
um, like we didn't really know, I guess, what industry to hit. We didn't know what would have the highest uh, rev- like the highest amount of revenue or would have a really high gross merchandise volume. Um, and as well as that, like what people actually wanted. So there was, you know, a few sides of the uh, coin. One thing that we found, um, again, which is, it's all related to this validation is that, you know, dresses, heaps of people have dresses at home, right? Um, but what we also noticed is that there's so many higher um, dress places that are out there at the moment. You know, there's the, the market's full of them. So we said, okay. Mm-hmm. And then we went over to the, to the gardening and tools and, 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 rent and renting all that sort of things. And we thought, okay, you know, this is a market. And we actually did, we, we did get, you know, quite a fair bit of demand. But one thing that we realized was that the gross merchandise volume and the revenue just wasn't quite there. Like our average sort of sale was around that $30 mark, um, which means that, you know, we're, we're not, we're only getting 20% of that, which is, um, you know, not, not ideal. So I was like, okay. And then what we realized is that there was a huge demand for events. Um, so stuff like DJ gear, you know, um, speakers, like all that sort of thing. And I was like, Oh wow. Okay. This is interesting. And the gross merchandise volume was so high for that because if you're hiring out, you know, DJ decks, they're worth like two point four five um, thousand dollars. If you're getting sort of anything, even secondhand, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're very, very expensive. Um, not only that, but you know, speakers as well. That's like, if you get two of them, it's about 1,500. How much, mm. how much easier is it just to, to hire one out for a party or, or, you know, if you want to teach yourself how to, how to, you know, use some decks and whatnot. So that's, I guess, how Gecko came about it. But I think it's definitely something that, you know, it's, it's a couple of um, examples that can sort of be used for any business. You know, that fact of, you know, being able to, to interview a, a few people and, and ask them, you know, what, what are the things that, that, you know, make you, that really drive you and whatnot. And then the other aspect of like actually seeing the quantitative um, analytics of, of the data of how many people are, you know, are renting, you know, a certain category out and whatnot. Awesome. So surveys is a really good idea. Maybe doing some um, searches online to see what people are searching for yes. and then talking to real customers. Yes. And then to build maybe the smallest, cheapest, dirtiest prototype <laughs> the thing that you want to want to test and yeah. putting it in front of people and seeing if they're actually if they will um, engage with it or even just uh, maybe building a landing page driving some ads you know driving some traffic to it through yeah. facebook ads or google ads or instagram yeah. and then seeing how people perform on your landing page that's a far better way to test whether your market wants what you want to sell than to go out there, put all your eggs in one basket, get stuff manufactured or get technology built, which is really expensive and time consuming without you knowing whether you are building the right website or whether you are designing the right widget or gadget. That's, that's validation. Absolutely. Yeah. I think another thing as well that you can sort of, as you mentioned, you know, with your, with your Facebook and Instagram ads, um, a really cool thing that you can do is actually test out, you know, what phrases work. Um, so one thing that we weren't sure of is what, what were the reasons why people were listing items? Cause like we had sort of a rough idea, but we didn't really know what would make people tick. So um, the, the main thing that we, that we realized is that people want to make money. That was the, the number one reason why people um, would list an item. Then number two was because they wanted to save to, to go and travel or, or, or something along those sorts of lines. Then number three was that aspect of helping the environment. And then number four was being able to, to you know, miss out on, like, so you don't miss out on festivals or, or, or something like that. So I think that was really, really powerful for us because we actually overvalued how much the environment would make an impact on someone um, hiring an item or not because we thought, oh, you know, the environment, you know, that's so cool. But I thought about it, like none of my mates really cared about the fact that, you know, the, of what we do for the environment and how it helps it. What they cared about is making money off, you know, their, their costume. Um, so that's, that's mm. I guess, the, the main thing that we found. through. Mm. Yeah. And so you learn that through talking to your customers, yeah. talk, talking to your cu- customer yeah. segment. Okay, beautiful. So um, basically, have the right mindset, align your passion with the industry or align yourself and your passion with the industry that you want to move into. If you're currently not in an industry that you're passionate about, maybe it's time to use this opportunity or just 
time that you have available, spare time, uh, to test whether you can actually start a business on the side that you could later transition in. Um, if you're currently in business and you want to innovate and pivot, because you might have to, then the way to do that is to brainstorm some ideas and then to use this validation to see whether the market really wants what you want to sell. And as part of that process, you also need to find the messaging. That's really the term that we use, right? The messaging, the phrases that people, that people in your market will relate to. And so it's a bit of a test and an experiment or you could even see it as a bit of a business adventure that you need to go on in the early days to see, to kind of test the waters and see whether people are willing to engage with the product and service that you have in mind for them. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. No. So, so, once, so, so let's just be clear. The whole idea of today's Hub Live is to make your first 100 sales with very little money called yep. growth hacking. Yep. But that's not going to happen necessarily to an idea that hasn't been validated yep. we can't i'm just going to grab what do i have um my cup my cup so we can't just go okay i'm going how can i get a hundred of these sold tomorrow without knowing that people want to buy glasses of water so do step one of getting a hundred sales is to validate that what you want to sell is actually something that people want to buy from you yeah yep Awesome. So let's get into growth hacking, which means how can I get a hundred sales quickly without spending too much money? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So one thing um, I think is super important from the get go is just sort of understand um, what are the problems that sort of already exist? What are people doing already um, as I guess a substitute of which your uh, product or, or service is going to make it that much more easy. So you might be in um, financial advice and you might find out that, you know, the, all the advisors don't call back after a week. And then, you know, one of your policies might be, you know, as soon as um, message is done within 24 hours, um, you know, something's going to be put out. So it's just, I guess, finding what the real pain points are within your industry um, to begin with, which I guess you sort of do in your validation period when you're finding out uh, your point of differentiation. So I think that the next thing is, I guess, that substitute. So for us, um, what we found is what a lot of people were doing when they wanted to hire items is they'd go on to Gumtree and they'd say hire as opposed to, to selling or they'd go on to Facebook Marketplace and sort of do that same thing. Um, but another thing that we noticed is that when you actually do that, um, you get a ton of messages from people who think that you're selling your items. So it's actually a really, mm. it's a, it's a real uh, annoyance or, or pain point for, for people because you know, that they, they, they're putting it for hire and so many people want to buy it and, and you know, it's okay when, when you get one or two or three messages, but as soon as you start getting a hundred, it's, it gets a little bit, um, overwhelming and a bit frustrating. So I think that's, that's definitely, um, you know, something to, to really look into and that's something that we doubled down on and that's a, a big part of, of how we made our, our first hundred sales I think um, other things as well is sort of as you say double down on the, the customers that you sort of first get so what we got at, at the beginning was a couple of my friends actually and they it wasn't because they were trying to help me out it was because they genuinely were having a party and they had no idea where to find speakers so they went to me and said, Hey, can you get me speakers? And I went, yeah, no worries. Um, so, and, and I, cause I knew some of my mates that had some speakers and we did it that way. So we actually tested it without even building a product first to see, you know, how this would all work. And we sort of realized, okay, well, a big, um, a big hiccup right now is that, um, people don't want to go drive or, or pick up items like that. That's a, it's a real pain point. So we thought, okay, well, maybe we can put in delivery system and, and, and whatnot. And that's how you start getting scale is because, you know, first you, you try it out yourself. You do the, the unscalable first. And then that's when you can start automating things and you can partner with, with, with other organizations in order to, to, get, um, to get that sense of you know, uh, delivery and, and, and whatnot. So that's, some, that's another thing, I guess, that we did in order to get um, our first 100 sales, creating, I guess, a character persona in my okay, opinion. hold on. I'm going, to, I'm going to quickly interrupt you. I was trying to yeah, sure. summarize what you just said because it's pretty key. Yeah. So, so how to get 100 customers. Number one, step number one, look at how people are currently solving the problem that you want to solve. Absolutely. So in Gecko's uh, example, people were going to Gumtree and they were renting, trying to not go, not sell, but rent. And they were using Gumtree to be able to rent out their stuff. 
So that's how they were solving their problem to start with. So you essentially hacked into that existing system and intercepted those customers and then brought them into the Gecko fold, right? Yeah, absolutely. And another thing we sort of noticed as well is that Gumtree doesn't have an inbuilt security system. So like it, it's just finding, finding out everything you need to know from these customers, I think is, is super important because they're the ones that really like they wanted this yesterday, you know, finding those customers that are like, yes, I, I, I love what you're doing. Like, let's get started. You know, um, here are all my ideas. And then you make them feel valued as well because they're like, oh, you know, you know, like all oh, my ideas making a difference in the world, you know, that's cool. Yeah. It's awesome. So really what you're looking for, you're looking for people who have already got up off the couch and they've already gone to their laptop and they've already inter, um, interacting with Google or with Gumtree or with wherever your customer is trying to solve the problem. So essentially find your customers at the point where they are ready to make a purchase. That's point number one. And then hack into that. Um, intercept that customer and bring them to you by delivering things quicker or easier or making it more secure or doing something that is better than the, the uh, solution that they're currently engaging with. Number one. Number two, if you have even a couple of people who want to interact with you, that's awesome. Give them the best possible experience that you can and go the extra mile, but not necessarily go and build the platform to do that. You can use, just use your own, use, you know, email to message them, use your own car to do the delivery, use your own mates to connect them and use your own bank account or get used cash just to check that people are willing to pay for what it is that you want to sell. And then C, learn from that experience. So then you go from maybe one or two or three customers and then you ask yourself, where am I going to find people just like them? Yep. Just like them. Okay, now we go to the persona. So now we have a couple of people that we've intercepted because they were at the point of purchase. And we've kind of, in a stealth manner, we've harnessed that, that sale for us. We've used just whatever we could uh, we've become very super resourceful to deliver an exceptional customer experience. And now we have some data, a real life experience to be able to take us to the next level. And that's where the avatar, the customer persona comes in. Okay. Yep. How do we do that? Yes. Okay. So it's pretty much, uh, it's the rule of, look, would you, the, there's a, I guess a, a question, a common question that's um, in startups and it's, would you rather have 100 people that like your product or would you rather have five people that love your product and the answer to that and is, buy from you buy from yeah, you that's it well that's and that's it because you know if they love your product obviously they, they will um, be buying from you so I think the, the the most important thing is that you have those, those five people that really love what you're doing and it helps shape um, you know I guess what you're what you're doing from from there on out because um, if you if you have people that are like that, there's going to be other people that are like that that are out there, and you just need to just keep keep hitting, keep hitting um, those types of people, and then they'll love the product and they'll tell their friends, and then you start getting referrals and 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 whatnot. So you know that's I think that's definitely the the key is by creating this this product and, and service that people really love. So that's why you create these customer personas. So. I guess relaying this back a little bit um, with your marketing messages and everything that you're sort of doing, you have to sort of look at your customer. So for example, you know, if it's, um, if it's Dave, he's 60 years old um, and you know, is a bit technologically challenged, you're probably not going to advertise with emojis onto social media, right? Um, it, it might be, there's definitely sort of other avenues in which you can sort of go down, right? But for our customer persona, they're, they're a lot younger. So social media is definitely an avenue um, that, are, that are for us because we, we noticed that, you know, Louis, he's, he's one of our biggest, um, biggest hires uh, or lenders, as we call them. Um, and he's made about, you know, $2,000, $3,000 just by using Gecko. So we have literally got Louis, you know, all his details um, just by chatting with him and whatnot, you know, what his goals and ambitions are and everything like that. And we've put it all um, into, you know, this one sort of document. So every, I guess, message and, and, and social media post that we put out, we go, you know, would Louis 
you know, love react this or, or like react it. You know what I mean? It's, it's little things like that that make such a difference. And if the answer is no, then it, it shouldn't be posted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, but then you, you don't just have Louis, you also have Jennifer, who's on the other side. Um, and, and she's a little bit older, she's a little bit more sort of mature. And, you know, she's, she's also made, um, the, uh, sorry, she's, she's made, you know, $3,000 as well because she used to work in events. Um, so she has a ton of items that are sort of at home. So, you know, then, then you create this, this character persona for, for Jennifer and that's who you're targeting um, in, in that sort of sector. So that's, I guess, the, the key is just creating, you know, a product or service that people really love um, and then that's when they'll tell their friends and then they'll tell their friends and you get this um, product market fit. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, just to kind of wrap up what we're saying, because we are coming to the end of our Hub Live today. Yep. So let me just wrap this up for us. Sure. Essentially, we take the customers that are interacting with us. We take our, num our best customer that we have right now and you might have five best customers. And then you go and talk to those people and you keep a document of what they love, what their goals are, what their frustrations and fears are, what their dreams are. Um, just you, you're trying to understand everything from their age, where they are living, what they spend their time doing to their psychology. You want to really get a deep understanding of them in the same way as you would when you are starting to date a new person right? You want to know everything about that person. You want to know what they like, what they don't like, what music they listen to, you know, what time they go to bed, what time do they get up? What's their routine like? That's the kind of interest that you need to show in your customers in the most non-stalky, non-word way possible. <laughs> um, and then you create these, what is called in marketing world avatars. So you might have five. I don't think you should ever have more than five avatars, three no, to five avatars. Yep. And yep. then what you do with all of your marketing is you think about that person before you put the post out in the same way as you would think about your partner before you send them a message so you know what your partner's likes and dislikes are because you really like know them and when you type up a message or you send an emoji or you don't send an emoji or you send a meme or you send a picture you know that that person is either going to be happy or sad or angry because you know them and that's how you think about your marketing. You think about those customer avatars and you only create marketing that they're going to love and then that they're going to interact with. So you use images that they're going to love. You use words that they will relate to. And then you, you try and create interaction with them. And when you do that, then usually people hang out with people that are like them. We yeah. like people that are like us. And so then those people will refer more of their avatars to us and then we can transact more and we can get to our hundred first hundred sales without having spent a heap on marketing. Yeah. So I think as well as that, um, just, just on that is I think it's good to build uh, content um, that's, that's based for these, I guess, avatars, but just, I think it's really important to, to note that this is probably a really important thing that I need to say is that, don't don't stress so much on sending that text as if it were you know someone that you've just started dating um i mean depends on i guess the person you are and whatnot but i think it's it's really important that you are getting content out there in the first place i think that your character persona should i get you know you should target it towards them but a lot of the times you know you you might sort of make a mistake where you think that you know uh you know uh, Greg might laugh at this, but you know, he doesn't end up sort of laughing at this. You know what I mean? So I think what's more, in, what's important, particularly when you're just starting is that you have quite a lot of quantity, but it's just moderation. You know what I mean? It's, it's not having just too much, you know, quantity where you're putting out like five posts a day because that's, that's well too much. Um, and it's not that you're, you're really spending, you know, three hours on a social media post that ends up getting three likes because that's, there's, there's no use in that either. There's definitely a middle ground and it's really, really important, um, that, yeah, I guess you, you, I guess moderate it in order to, um, in order to find that, that sweet spot where you're going to get high engagements. Um, but you know, you're not spending too much time, um, on that, that social media stuff that's and, a and everything. 
that's a really good point. So it's better to just put social media content out there than to procrastinate because you don't know what your avatar will relate to yes. and to check because we're always exploring and you should always have a percentage of your content as exploration content. We're just putting it online to see what your market will respond to and how they will respond to the content. Absolutely. And the best part about social media as well is the fact that you have all the data that's literally right in front of you, like literally on your laptop, on your phone, you can see how many people have liked it. You can see how many people have looked at it. Um, and how many people have, have stopped swiping and clicked on it, you know? So I think that's a really, really cool thing um, that's, that's at your hands as well. And then you can say, oh, okay, well, this one got, you know, 10 likes and only 50 people saw it versus this one, which got one like and, you know, 500 people saw it. So obviously the one with that, that got, um, you know, 10 likes. And usually it doesn't work like that. Usually, you know, if you have higher engagements, then it goes to more people because the algorithm is consumer-centric. Um, which means that it, it's it's going to the customers because Facebook recognizes, oh, a lot more people like it um, than the other post that you did that only got one like. So just just keep that in mind as well um, is is just uh, you have the, all the data in front of you. So there's absolutely no excuse to to not just go through the analytics and just go, okay, well, this one worked really well. This one got, you know, 30 likes versus this one didn't do too well. It only got five likes or, or whatever. So. Awesome. Mr. Ben Kennedy Gecko, thank you so very much for joining us to talk about mindset and validation and growth hacking and Gecko. I did mention that at the end we might share some photos, but what I think we should do is put, put some photos in the comments so that everyone can kind of see the photos in the comments. Right so if you, wouldn't be, if you wouldn't mind um, sharing with us some of those photos of things that people have hired uh, through your platform, um, and uh, yeah, I know that you've shared some fun things with us in our WhatsApp group. So yeah, it would be really <laughs> cool if you could share some of that again. Hey, uh, Ben, thank you so much for, for contributing to today, today's Hub Live. Really, really appreciate your contribution. And uh, good luck with Gecko. We look forward to reading about it's a great success very, very soon. Always a pleasure, Elise. Thank you so much for having me.